when you first try something with a new technology, if the first thing you try works, it's empowering, right? If you try to write Hello World in Java, your first attempt is going to give you this massive stack trace that tells you, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at Westfall. And today's question is, which programming language should I learn first? So I'm talking to you as a beginner, you've never done any coding in your life, which language should you be looking at to learn? And from my intro that you've just seen from Rasmus Ladoff, the founder of PHP, he is very adamant that the first language you should learn is PHP. And that in my short answer is exactly the language that you should be looking for. Now, he made an absolutely fantastic point that we should all understand. And it's totally contrary to all the other people out there on the internet that tells you to learn C sharp or one of these really heavy looking languages. And the point I'm trying to make down here is about making things happen. I'm just completely different mindset compared to all the other languages. You don't understand that when someone is learning a language, right? And the worst, most frustrating thing is that you're trying and you're getting all sorts of errors. It's very, very uh, disheartening. You seem like you're going nowhere at all. What I feel, right, especially when it came to my own experience on this, is that you just wanna have things happen. You wanna be able to code and create something. And I, my feeling is exactly the same way that people would treat say a small kid or a child who's given their Lego set. You don't care whether they fit the model and the colors match and the thing looks exactly like the box. It is like that Lego movie, right? Where you just throw things together, right? Do you want to sit down and talk about it? What the heck is that? It's a double-decker couch, which seemed like a good idea at the time, but I, I now realize it's not super helpful. But it does, you know, it has cup holders. Seats flip up with coolers underneath. You are so disappointed. Yeah, it's that, that guy, uh, the, the special. He's just ripping up stuff, making things happen, being random. But when it comes to coding, a lot of you guys are thinking as experienced persons, as uh, you know, that you want to go out, you want to learn types, you want to go strict, you want to do all these things. But for a lot of people, I think 80 to 90% of the people who try coding and abandon it, it's because they cannot feel empowered and just going nowhere. You're spinning your wheels, dirt's just coming out, you're not going anywhere. And that's where PHP really, really shines. PHP is built to not only scale up, but scale down. It is very, very forgiving language set in the right settings that actually gets things happening. In fact, like it's what Rasmus was saying, if you do Hello World in Java, which you can, I've done it before, made a Minesweeper game back a long time ago, it will give you error after error, it's slow and slow, and you don't know what's going on. You know, you have to use all sorts of tools from Ellipse and all sorts of editors, and you can't get a single thing happening with something like Java, right? So that's why PHP is the best language to start off with. It's very empowering. You're gonna get straight out there. You're gonna create something and you're gonna have fun. Just have fun, people. And it, I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, Lionel, what about getting a job at Google? What about at a Big Fang? What about making these you know, huge companies that I wanna learn coding, bootcamp and blah, 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 make hundreds of thousands, become a millionaire. Okay, all right, slow down, Grasshopper, slow down. Before run, must walk, okay? The fact is, first of all, you want to learn some of the concepts. Nobody is hired at all, any of the big fang companies or anything like that just because they know a single language. Please, no, that doesn't happen. They've got a fuller, more competitive stack than you ever can think of. It's more about the problem solving part. I'm talking to you guys as someone coming from square zero, just learning it, figuring it out, trying to make things happen in the computer. That is the people that I'm talking to. And once you get the hang of it, you can pick up any other language. I mean, this is one of those concepts like that university professors won't even admit, right? That if you know some concepts, you can just apply it elsewhere. 
you know, the dialects in the different languages are a little bit different, but if you spend that time, you, you'll be able to apply yourself and learn that. But if you lose your enthusiasm for coding, if you think it's crap, if you're too frustrated, if nothing's happening, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot you are simply going to abandon it and chuck it in the dustbin and go off and do something else. I went onto YouTube and I saw a couple of videos about other languages that, uh, you know, experts are recommending. And this is one of them. And he's talking about learning Python and JavaScript as your first language. Now, there's nothing wrong if you're already in it. Go ahead, try it out. But I just want to pull out two caveats on all of these, on, on both of these languages, right? that don't really make them ideal for a complete noob. The first one is in JavaScript. Now, the problem with JavaScript is that you need to know what a front-end and a back-end JavaScript is, okay? And this can be very confusing for a lot of beginner people. You're looking at the documentation, certain functions don't work in the front-end, certain functions don't work in the back-end, not sure how you're gonna put them all together. So this is the first problem, there's a front-end, back-end, uh, when you're learning JavaScript. PHP doesn't have that. It's all back-end stuff, right? So that's one issue one. Issue two is that traditional plain vanilla syntax of JavaScript is pretty bad. Okay, if you've seen it, document dot find iid dot da 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 very, very long uh, syntax. So if you want thing to do plain vanilla JavaScript, that's very confusing. So not very ideal for the beginner. And then the last part, right, is that you've got all sorts of dialects of JavaScript all over the place. It can get a little bit confusing if you don't even know the landscape. What am I talking about? You guys might know, you've got Webpack coming in, you have uh, React, JavaScript, TypeScript, all these compiled things that go with the NPM. It's a little bit overwhelming. Honestly, you can't even run anything if you've got all this stuff. A lot of it, especially traditional from the front end, uh, things like import, there's this ES6 thing that's really confusing. So you're going to run into all this kind of stuff before you figure out what node or front end looks like. So that's why I wouldn't recommend JavaScript as a beginner language. It's just got, it's evolving a lot. It's very mixed at the moment. Now, the other one, Python, right? It's a, it's pretty established scripting language, but it has a couple of drawbacks to learn. The first one is that it cannot be embedded with your HTML. So if you're done PHP, you know you can just insert a tag in there and put a HTML variable, uh, put a var PHP variable and display it. Python doesn't have that, okay? So what happens is that you're gonna be ending up working with a lot of blank console lines. It's gonna look really ugly every single time because you can't add the CSS until you use some sort of template engine, right? Now, if you're a beginner, this is just one point, is that you can't see those beautiful CSS uh, designs. You can't see what a web page looks like, right? And that to me, uh, when I was learning this, I think I was doing Haskell way back in the day, right? I wasn't even in CS. I thought that was really frustrating because most of us are used to looking at web pages. Well, used to looking at that, those beautiful uh, colors and uh, arrangements, and you would like something similar that sort of links in there. How many of you guys, right? How many of you guys actually turn on your computer and go to the command prompt? You know, you look, you see that C dot dot thing, or the Linux prompt, and you're like, yes. You know, if you if you're doing C prompts, you don't need to learn. Uh, you're not beginner anymore. Okay. So that is one of the, the, the next issue about Python is that indentation can be an issue. So what am I talking about? If you've seen Python code, you know that they don't use brackets, they indent their lines of code for a code block. Now this can be really confusing to a beginner person because you're not used to looking at the indentation and having the wrong indentations uh, can cause errors in your script and they're very hard to pick up unless you're very experienced. So this can be very frustrating for a new decoder. Like you prefer to have something that shows it out like a bracket. It's a lot easier to work with. And the worst thing is that if your logic is sort of, it still works with the indentation, but you can't get the right answer. So this is, I think is a issue, usually overlooked by if you're an experienced programmer because you've got the right tools. But for the beginner, you don't know what tools to use. This can be a major issue, right? So 
bottom line on this topic is that PHP is the number one easiest language for you guys to learn out there and learn how to code. Go out there, have fun, make stuff, try crazy little web pages. Forget about what all the guys out there are talking about of how to make lots of money getting into big companies. Just enjoy making something first. Treat it like Lego. Get it wrong, get it right, doesn't matter. Have fun every weekend, new little patch here, little patch there. Try a little thing, try out some of the, the loops. Most importantly, enjoy yourself, feel empowered by the language. Don't feel crushed and pressed down by all the jargon down there. Ignore all that kind of stuff. Remember, simple steps first, enjoy the language. After that, you can go anywhere else, but make PHP your first language that you learn how to code. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead sits.